What's up everybody? Russ with RWG Research and QuantumGravityResearch.org. So check us out uh, today. I'm going to show you something pretty fun. Uh, I'm, I'm currently in the process of building a constant voltage uh, power supply. Um, the voltage that I have around here currently is sitting at 114 volts. It will drop all the way down to 107 or less. And all of the UPSs that I have in here just flicker on and off. So it's very bad power. Um, so with that said, um, I'm building a constant variable power source to supply my filament extruder. Okay, And the reason I want to do that is because it relies on the line voltage. Now, um, one of the options that I have is to take an old UPS, which um, I currently have right here. This is a, this is a big UPS. Um, so this is a very, 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 very big UPS and turn it into a constant variable power supply. Now, the um, certain type of UPSs actually already do this, so they already take the line voltage, they turn it into DC, uh, into the batteries, and then take the battery load and put it back into the system, and that's a constant variable, or a constant uh, voltage source. But, this one is not. This one only switches on and off the AC when it, when it quits and switches to the batteries. So that's not what this video is about, but that's the current project. So I'm going to show you something else I'm doing for that current project. So I thought um, I'm going to do without batteries. I'm going to run AC into this thing and power it through power supplies that are constant um, output DC. So this is what I have. I have a brick power supply from a server. These are amazingly awesome. Check these suckers out. All right. Let's see if we can find it right there. Output 12 volts 32 amps, 5 volts 5 amps. That's uh, that's some serious uh, power out of a brick. That's a small. That's really a pretty small power supply for 32 amps and 12 volt DC. Now this particular model has just a blade sticking out of the back with the connections on there. So um, I did some research. These have already been hacked. Very simple to trick and turn into a. A nice power supply which I have done here so this actually has the proper connections all right and I will be making a different video actually I probably put it in this video to be honest so you just got your your positive power here and your two ground rails which do come around to the bottom ground rails you must connect all four of the ground rails together and then the bottom you just connect your ground rail so we can get a focus the ground rail to the Let's see, second pin, fourth pin, and the eighth pin. Right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. So second, fourth, and the eighth pin. Connect them to the ground and bada boom, bada bing, you have a 32 amp brick DC output power supply. Um, I went ahead and soldered a, uh, a plug onto the end of this. Alright, this is, a, I don't even know how many amps this thing is. 50 amps, 600 volt. That's pretty good. Um, so the reason that I put this on here is because I tried this already with a different UPS power supply that runs off of a 12 volt all right, battery. Now this one runs off of 24 volt. So um, I'm actually going to be showing you in, in this video how to isolate the DC grounds because um, when I take this apart you'll see that right inside here these two pins are electrically connected to the ground plane. Um, so what that means is, is if I want to make this a 24 volt power supply, which I do, um, if I touch anything together, um, they're not going to work. They're going to short out. And because of the grounds, the ground pins are actually shorted together already. It doesn't matter what I do. If I isolate these or don't touch them or whatever, they're earth grounded. That's going to be a problem. Um, you could cut the earth ground off, but I'd rather leave the earth ground and just manipulate the DC side. So I'm going to show you today how to how to, I'm going to do that and the cool thing about this experiment or this project is that I'm going to use items that you probably already have laying around and I'm going to show you how to make your own insulators without uh, going out and buying a bunch of special insulators for you know this reason. So that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and actually tear this thing apart and I'll do that in time lapse. So here we go. All right, so I've taken this apart halfway, and there's two things I wanted to show you. 
Um, one of the things is the ground that comes in on the AC side. Here it is. It comes right in off the. Uh, now this is actually a line filter. All right, and the line filter comes in and it directly connects to this. So if I disconnect this, um, you know you're you're good to go, right? Well, that's incorrect. This is electrically connected to this back. So the ground is connected to this housing, and this housing is touching all the way around this. So in order to isolate the ground coming in, you're either going to have to cut it off externally, or you're going to have to literally disassemble this whole thing and try to somehow insulate that, which is not a good idea. So the other thing is, is I've got three screws. There's one down here, 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 and here. And you can see these screws directly connect to the ground plane. All right. So we're going to just take these four screws out. And one thing that you will need to know is you're probably going to need longer screws. I happen to have piles and piles of things that I've kept from everything I take apart. So I happen to have the correct screws. Um, you can probably find some on an old PC or something. Usually they're all the same thread type. So there's the four screws on the bottom of the power supply. And we should be able to slide this bad boy out of here. Disconnect the plugs. This plug here is actually for the light on the front side of this thing. It tells you that it's on. It's kind of nice. Alright, so here's, here's the brick power supply. There's really not as much in there as you might think. I've seen a much, much, much worse designed power supplies where there's a thousand wires going everywhere. So nice little power supply. You can see the, you can see how the ground planes are all connected. Even the ones in the back are connected to uh, isolate uh, high voltage spikes and stuff. There are capacitors um, going to each one filter capacitors that actually go to the ground plane, so they're all tied together. So these grounds are not necessarily tied to these grounds except through the casing in this case. So, what I'm going to do is show you how to make standoffs with things that you should have around and or are readily available. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate the front two and the back two. Now one thing that you have to remember when you isolate this is that this is going to be shimmed up a little bit. And so what I had to do on the other one was actually cut this bracket down right here because when I put it back on it was actually hitting. So that's just something to take note of, but I'll show you that when we get there. Um, it's a good thing you could probably blow this off with air real quick. I'm not going to. Um, in case you're wondering, there are two potentiometers right here where you can adjust the voltage output and probably current. I know one adjusts the voltage output, but I've messed with the voltage output on constant voltage power supplies in the past. And uh, that's not really the best thing to do, although you can change it a little. If you go too far, it messes things up. Um, and usually you can get it back, but I just learned not to mess with them. So one thing you could use is heat shrink, okay, right here. Um, but what I'm going to show you how to use today is these connectors. So these connectors have a really nice um, insulative protector on them, and I don't really know what it's made out of. Uh, it doesn't really say. So these happen to fit perfectly on top of these sliders right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take four of these connectors. And the connectors are still going to be good when I'm done. I'm just going to be taking the casings off. I'm going to grab my lighter. and two pair of, uh, of pliers. So here's what I'm going to do. This is the easiest way I found out how to get these plastic casings off of here. Um, I've tried to pull these off without getting them warm and it's really almost impossible. Basically you're just going to warm these up a little bit. Doesn't take much. Maybe a little more. Oh, that's it pull them right off. That one almost got too hot actually. So if I try to pull one of these off right now, if they're cheap they'll come off. 
so that one actually did pretty good but as you can see maybe I messed it up a little bit a little bit too much there um, yeah, love my focus so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna heat the I'm gonna heat this one up just a little bit maybe not quite as much it really doesn't take much it just softens it a little there you go that's all you need I'll do this one So now these these connectors are still perfectly good. They just won't have insulators on them when I want to use them next, but it's okay. Now I am I am actually using uh, also the red one here for the top side of the screw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of these red ones. All right, I'm going to get a, a very sharp razor blade, very very sharp. All right, and I'm going to set this right on the edge of the desk, and I'm going to cut this little sliver. Just want a little piece. All right. See that little bitty sliver? It's really all you need. That's going to be insulating the top side of my screw on the circuit board. I'm going to cut. A, I'm going to cut a couple more that are a little bit thicker. Okay, that one's a tiny bit thicker. I think that's a little better. But if they're too thick and your screws are too sharp, that ain't going to help you either. Alright, so I need four of those. And again, these insulators that I'm cutting up, um, I currently used four of them. <clears throat> so if four of them is, uh, is more than you want to waste, then you can go figure out another solution. But I found out that these make great insulators. These, these connectors are still good. That one you can just put a piece of heat shrink or something around it when I get to that point if I need it. Um, okay, so next we've got the top insulators, all right, and these are going to be the bottom insulators. So as you see these fit like perfectly on here, all right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure and I'm going to be cutting actually the top of these off just slightly before um, just a little bit of like to where you have extra above the top side of that So again with a very sharp razor blade you can cut these quite easily Without a sharp razor blade you're going to be fighting it So you can see I cut that off so there's just a tiny bit All right left sticking past the top So now you can either take your razor blade and cut it here or I'm going to take a pair of very sharp side cuts and actually cut eight slots. Alright, so one here, one here, I'll cut eight equal slots and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold over I'm going to fold in the slots. Four of them are going to go in. So you have a little so you have a little uh, a little castle when you're done here. That focus really drives me crazy. There it is. So you have a little castle. And then you're going to fold the other ones out. I presume you could cut them off, but I'm going to fold them out. Okay, so it looks something like this. Now, I am going to um, cut just a tiny bit off on each one of these so that I can get my screw in here easily. So I'm just cutting like a little a little bit off. Don't cut too much. That's a problem. I'm 
what you're actually doing here is creating that bottom insulator. So this is going to be isolating the circuit board from the case. So you want to make sure you have enough material. So when you're done, you, you should have something that looks like this. Alright, and your screw is going to go right through the middle. And this, the only reason the extra bottom here is nice is so that it stays on there when you're trying to assemble it. Okay, that's your bottom insulator. Pretty straightforward idea. And we're going to go ahead and do them all in time lapse and then we'll put the power supply together. currently have these on here. You can see them all I think. And again the reason that I like them where they stay on here like this is because it'd be really hard to get them on there otherwise. Uh, especially how this power supply is. But um, you might be asking why I didn't use these cutoffs for the top. And it's because they're just flat out too big. Um, these smaller ones are going to be needed to catch the screws. So, let's reassemble this. Maybe. There we go. Plug the power back in. Make sure my insulators are on there. One thing I forgot to show you was uh, I forgot to do the test to show you that I had continuity across there, but that's okay. You just have to trust me. So there we go. Now you can see my insulators in there. Alright, sorry about the blurry footage. The camera doesn't like to focus anymore. So now, <clears throat> I did, like I said, I happen to have some longer screws laying around here. Here's the original versus the new. Um, that is going to be a problem for some people. Sometimes they make the screws long enough. So I'm actually going to take a piece of heat shrink tubing. Alright. I'm going to take a small piece, just big enough to fit over the threads, like this. Alright, and I'm going to heat it just a tiny bit. The reason I'm doing that is because I want to make sure that all this is insulated well. So a little piece of heat shrink tubing over the uh, screw will uh, definitely help you in the long run if by chance, man I'm really tired of this focus, by chance uh, something would want to try to short out. So what you end up with was an insulator, the uh, heat shrink, and then you've got your insulator on the board going to stick it in here. Now you don't need to over tighten it because you don't want to smash everything to the point where it's touching on the bottom or the top. Just tighten it so it's snug and you should have isolation. So let's go ahead and do the whole thing. So I forgot to do the continuity test before and after, but I'm going to go ahead and do the continuity test now so you can see. So, I don't know if you can hear my meter squealing, but it is. So just 
you know, check one of these to the case and uh, test your grounds. I got complete isolation. Now you can see if I touch my ground to my case, I still get continuity. And that's because this is still grounded and this is still grounded. Now you can disconnect this, but since the case here is still grounded to the case, you're kind of out of luck on trying to ground that, unground the actual true earth ground. Now on this case here, um, this has this tab which is just allows basically for this to pop in and out of the server. This is actually riveted on the case, so you have two options. You could just quickly drill this out, or because I know um, this should come, excuse me, this should come off easy because of how it's riveted. I'm literally just going to, I'm just going to like tear this off. Ta da! <clears throat> Alright. So, now like I said before, when I put this fan back on, because I've raised this whole entire circuit board up, you want to make sure nothing touches on top and all this kind of stuff. Um, luckily inside here there's a piece of insulator board, so um, that'll be nice, that'll help. But when I put this back on, you can see if I put the screw holes so they line up, this actually touches all the way across this circuit board and there's three pins right here and a couple of other stuff that it's going to rub into if I'm not careful. So I'm going to actually go onto the grinder and I'm going to grind this down a lot further then I'm going to take a piece of heat shrink and overlap it so that it doesn't smash on there. Safety first. Okay, now I'm going to actually take my knife, get the doll blade out, and uh, trim this, trim this metal just a little bit on the edges where I couldn't quite grind it all. Alright, make sure that there's no sharp edges and then now this will actually fit on here right without hitting so let's try this again there you go now you can see there's a nice big gap between there and that's what we want so I'm not even going to worry about insulating that one <coughs> I did take a piece of uh, insulator and insulate this one as you can see on the bottom which is just a piece of heat shrink tubing but I ground this one enough not to worry about it. So let's put this back together. The uh, DC isolated 12 volt power supply. So let's, uh, let's check it again after I get it all together. Okay. Check the bottom. Alright, so we're good. So now uh, I can connect these together in a uh, series and won't have to be concerned about shorting them out. Perfect. Alright, well there you go. Phase one in building my own um, AC constant output voltage supply. So I just isolated this one. I've already done this one. Now I can connect them together in series, and that'll give me my 24 volts that I need to run this uh, inverter. Now this actual inverter is uh, rated at uh, 950 watts, so 1400 volt amps. So that's almost a thousand watts of uh, constant voltage power. Uh, one of the other things I'm going to do is on this um, on this battery backup, the plug that goes in the front plug that's right here, it's inside this cubby hole, it's hard to see, I know. Uh, the battery tray, here's the plug, right here actually, it's still connected to a battery. Pull it off. So, 
this plug goes right into the front here, like this, maybe. I'll get it eventually. There we go. And then the batteries sit inside of this uh, inside of this tray on the side, and they slide inside of here like this. Which is all bent up. They slide inside here. And then these power cords actually go in this hole and um, inside here. And that's how that's how you can switch out your batteries, just like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the plug, remove this tray, insert AC power supply, and fasten these in here. Probably using some 3D printed brackets. Like that. And what I'm going to do <clears throat> is I'm going to hardwire the, the DC power into the main board and then have power coming out of this plug. So when I want to turn this into a uh, DC power supply, I'm just going to go ahead and plug this plug into here and then this will be my output. I'll have uh, 64 amps of DC output I can apply. Um, the other option is to build a whole new power supply, but I figured this will be a dual purpose. I can use it as a DC power supply or I can use it as a constant variable AC output supply. So that's it. Uh, this is phase one in the uh, building of my constant variable power supply. You have to excuse the noise in the background in this video, but I'm currently 3D printing a bracket. And uh, yeah. So let's move on to phase two. I'm gonna start wiring this thing up. Here we go. See you in the next video.